gastroplasty with endoscopic myotomy, the GEM procedure, for the treatment of obesity. Digestive physiology is critical to the understanding of endoscopic, bariatric, and metabolic therapies, and gastric motility is of particular importance. This involves three main elements. Storage, which is accomplished via fundal accommodation. Mixing, which serves to churn and break down the food into chyme. And emptying, which is accomplished by the antral pump function. Gastric interventions used to treat obesity are thought to work in part by interfering with the digestion of food and typically alter gastric motility. On the left, we have an example of the original Pose gastric plication procedure, which targeted fundal accommodation in an attempt to trigger earlier satiation. Intragastric balloons are thought to work by affecting both accommodation mixing and lead to a delay in gastric emptying. This is similar for endoscopic sleeve gastroplasty, and other devices are thought to target emptying via the antral pump function. We propose a novel procedure that affects several aspects of gastric motility in an effort to produce greater and more durable weight loss. Gastroplasty with endoscopic myotomy, or the GEM procedure, involves a pylorosparing antral myotomy via a submucosal tunnel, a running suture or belt to separate the gastric body from the antrum, and an endoscopic sleeve gastroplasty of the gastric body. On the left, we have an illustration of normal gastric physiology with storage of food via fundal accommodation, mixing, and emptying via the antral pump. On the right, we have the goals of the GEM procedure showing limited accommodation, reduced mixing, and impeded emptying. Next, we present the case of a 42-year-old female with class 3 obesity who presented for possible endoscopic therapy. Prior weight loss attempts, including lifestyle modification and medications, were not successful. Weight at the time of presentation was 236 pounds and her BMI was 46.1, and she elected to undergo the GEM procedure. Pre-procedure upper endoscopy revealed normal gastric mucosa and a mildly J-shaped stomach. There were no contraindications to the procedure. A submucosal injection is performed just distal to the incisura along the greater curvature. A horizontal incision is then made to gain access to the submucosal space. The horizontal nature of the incision and the overall small size of the access site facilitate subsequent sutured closure. We utilize a tapered distal attachment cap to facilitate entry and tunneling and a solution of 6% head of starch and dilute methylene blue. We stop in the distal antrum prior to the pylorus as it is important not to perform a pyloral myotomy. We then begin the myotomy in the distal antrum. We utilize a T-type electrosurgical knife with injection capability for both making the tunnel and creating the myotomy. Here we are creating a partial thickness myotomy of the circular muscle moving from distal to proximal along the greater curvature. The myotomies are typically rather long, with this myotomy extending roughly 6 centimeters in length and ending approximately 2 centimeters distal to the access site. The myotomy can also be performed in a proximal to distal fashion, however we find this approach more efficient. The myotomy may also be performed full thickness, in which case it is essential to be along the greater curvature where you are afforded protection by the gastrocolic ligament and the omentum. The access site is then sutured closed with a running suture moving from distal to proximal and left to right. The initial stitch is placed from outside the defect to inside, moving from the mucosal surface out through the submucosal surface, and the second stitch is placed from inside to out. This process is then repeated. We prefer to use a rat-toothed grasper instead of a helical grasper, as this is less traumatic to the tissue around the access site. 
Placing the bottom portion of the suturing device into the defect can help with stitch placement. It also can be helpful to use rotatable forceps. A horizontal incision and small overall access site were employed to facilitate this portion of the procedure. Gentle, consistent tension is then applied and a cinch is placed. During the next portion of the procedure, a running suture is placed at the level of the incisura, moving along the greater curvature and onto the posterior aspect of the stomach. We believe this is an important component of the procedure as it isolates the antrum and limits the amount of tension applied to the access site closure from the ESG U stitches. It's also important to guard against overinsufflation and to maintain a soft stomach during suturing as this helps with the acquisition of deep full thickness tissue bites and also protects the access site closure from potential disruption. A total of seven to nine stitches are typically placed in this distal belt and it is secured with strong tension. This also serves to further isolate the gastric antrum from the body. Finally, an ESG is performed in the gastric body using an alternating U-stitch and interrupted reinforcing suture pattern. This serves to both shorten and reduce the width of the stomach. Final endoscopic evaluation reveals a tight sleeve in the gastric body, a securely closed submucosal access site in the antrum, and an intact pylorus. We're also using a processor that detects mucosal oxygen saturation. And this reveals relatively low saturation in the tissue overlying the tunnel and at pressure points along the gastric plications. Here we see the baseline upper J series on the left and the two week follow up on the right, which showed a narrowed gastric body and reduced antral motility. Gastric emptying breath test showed a significant delay in emptying going from 97.6 minutes to 216 minutes at two weeks follow-up. The GCSI remained normal, however, with the doubling in the postprandial fullness and early satiety subscale. And her weight went from 236 pounds to 211 pounds, representing 10.6% total weight loss in one month. This procedure has the potential for greater weight loss as it inhibits the antral pump in addition to contributing to traditional ESG mechanisms of action. It also has the potential for more durable weight loss as myotomy may be more durable than suture-based gastric remodeling. In conclusion, GEM is technically feasible. It appears to induce a significant delay in gastric emptying and is associated with early weight loss. And further studies are now needed to prove the safety and efficacy of this novel technique.